Good afternoon, Minnesota. Magandang umaga, Pilipinas. Thank you for uh, tuning in with me today in our Wednesday Bible study. I hope and pray that you will be spiritually blessed. We are continuing our study on uh, the series of Jesus Christ teaching on the Sermon on the Mount based on the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. We recently concluded last week uh, the eight Beatitudes that Jesus Christ uh, taught in Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. Now we're continuing our series uh, on Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16. In this passage you will notice that Jesus used an analogy, a metaphor of salt and light as in at Elo. And it is used a number of times in the New Testament referring to the role of true followers of Jesus Christ in this in 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 their world and in our world and in matthew chapter 5 verse 13 jesus christ taught that you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown and trampled by men in verse 14 you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to the to all who are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven may the lord add blessing to the reading of his word in order to arrive at the correct understanding of this passage it is important to understand the context we know that the one speaking is Jesus Christ to whom he is speaking who is the original listener the disciples his followers following him on the Mount of Olives and that's where he started talking about the sermon the five important discourses concerning law prophets and Christian living the first 12 verses of Matthew chapter 5 refers to the Beatitudes. But this passage refers to other theologians call this the similitudes. And in this passage, Jesus uses the metaphor of salt and light. Let's start with the salt. You are the salt of the earth. What does Jesus really mean when he says, you are the salt of the earth what's the purpose of salt during jesus time during jesus time in our time it's almost the same as far as salt is concerned salt had many uses but the purpose in this context is in the middle east of the first century salt is used as a preservative for food and a food enhancer preservative for food and a food enhancer why? Because during Jesus' time, they don't have electricity. They don't have refrigerator or freezer. So, in order to preserve meat and other food, they need to use salt. So, number one, the first use of salt in this passage is to preserve food. Mapanatili yung pangapagkain. Especially the meat, which would quickly spoil in the desert environment under the heat of the sun so Jesus teaching his disciples that they are to be preservative they are to be God's preservatives in this world or in their world to their spouse family siblings friends even in their community so how are they will be God's preservative. They are to stop and slow down the advancement of moral and spiritual decay. Psalm 14 verse 3, the psalmist wrote, All have turned away, all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. In a way, people are inherently evil because of their sinful nature, all the way from Genesis chapter 3. So true followers of Christ are to preserve God's truth 
God's teaching, God's goodness to people around them, people they know. So Romans 8.8 8 says, Those who are in the flesh, those who are ungodly, cannot please God. And then the passage, Matthew 5.13, the second part is, But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it may be made salty again? So pwede po bang ma 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 lose yung, yung lasa ng, ng kaalatan ng asin? Can salt become less salty? What do you think? Pure salt, pure 100 salt, cannot lose its saltiness, cannot lose its flavor or its effectiveness. In chemistry, it is called sodium chloride, NaCl. It is a stable chemical compound and cannot become less of itself. So what was Jesus saying then when he says, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Paano nga ba? So some theologians offer several possibilities. Within the context, Jesus may have been referring to the salt that was collected from the Dead Sea by evaporation. The substance resembled pure salt, but it wasn't effective for preserving or food seasoning. That salt derived from Dead Sea is a common salt, but it is contaminated with other minerals, particularly gypsum. So they have a flat taste or a bland taste and ineffective as a preservative. Number two, Jesus could have been referring to the rock formations in which people would store their meat. The salt rock formation. Once the salt leaks out to the rocks, the rocks were no longer effective to serve as a preservative for their meat. Or Jesus may have been referring to the saying of that time, Can salt lose its saltiness it's a saying of their time it's a rhetorical question because salt cannot become less salty that's why it's called salt so the challenge as far as the metaphor for salt is how can a true follower of Christ how can you and I be God's preservative God's preservative agent to our wife, to our spouse, to our husband, children, parents, to our family? How can we become God's preservative to our siblings, to our friends, to our church, even in our community, specifically maybe in our school and in our workplace? Papaano nga ba? I think it starts with desiring and praying and seeking God's wisdom seeking the Holy Spirit's empowerment, seeking the Holy Spirit's direction, applying and living this command that we are the soul of the earth. This is the role we are playing. This is the role they are playing even during Jesus' time. What is the second metaphor? The second use of this salt is not only God's or, or preservative, but the second use is it's a flavor enhancer. Makaragdag ng, pang, ng, ng lasa, pangdagdag ng lasa, palawigin, pagandahin. That is enhancer, right? Generally, we don't want a bland food. Not unless you are sick and doctors prescribe no salt. We normally, our taste bud prefer food and drinks with enhanced flavor. So in the light of this, Jesus is instructing his disciples to enhance the flavor of their life, the flavor of the life of their family, their spouse, their community, their siblings, because we are living in this sin-saturated world. So how do we enhance the flavor of life? So let me suggest that we need to enrich we need to share god's god's truth that is the purpose of this covid i think that people who don't have time now have a lot of time 
reading God's Word, meditating God's Word, sharing God's Word, sharing God, His truth, His goodness, and making God, God's Word, God Himself, and His work stand out in our daily life. I mean, we enrich, the, we enrich God's truth and goodness, and we make God stand out in our attitude, in our behavior, with the words we speak, and in our actions. That is how we become flavor enhancer. Actually, the question with regards to this passage is, how do we treat others? How do we enhance the flavor? Jesus Christ offered a specific example that if you have enemies, Luke 6.35, love your enemies. Wow, that is so hard. Loving the lovable, yung madaling mahalin, dapat mahalin, madali yun. Pero love your enemies, it takes more than a natural capacity. We need supernatural help from the Holy Spirit. Love your enemies, Luke 6.35, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. You will be children of the Most High because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Look at that. Subalit ibigin ninyo ang inyong mga mga kaaway at gumawa kayo ng mabuti. Magpahiram kayo na hindi umaasa ng kapalit. Malaki ang magiging gantimpala ninyo at kayo'y magiging mga anak ng kataas-taasan sapagkat siya ay mabait sa mga di mapagpasalamat at sa di at sa mga masasama. Nako, this is so hard, right? We are to behave in ways that reflects Jesus Christ, God's love, Jesus' saving grace. How? By living under the guidance, the power, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and in obedience to Christ's command. This will inevitably influence the world, the people around us, in our family, in our friends, that we are a soul that has positive influence and enhancing flavor of our life and their life. So what's the practical application of this first metaphor? With our spouse, family, parents, children, siblings, friends and community around us, even in the workplace, where there is strife or where there is conflict, kung merong alitan at sigarot, true followers of Christ, you and me, are to be peacemakers. Remember? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. That is part of the beatitude. Tagapagpayapa. Tagapagpayapa in our words, in our thoughts, in our attitude, in our behavior, and in our action where there is strife and conflict, where there is sorrow and grief, kalungkutan at pighati, doon sa mga, na mga naulila, o na mga namatawayan, we are to be ministers of Christ. We are to be feet and hands of Jesus Christ, binding up wounds, healing up wounds through our words of encouragement, through our prayers, through our thoughts, our attitude and behavior and action manifest. God's truth and goodness and Jesus Christ's saving grace. Where there is hatred and anger, kung merong puot at galit, we are to exemplify the love of God. We are to manifest the love of God in Christ, forgiving one another, bestowing one another forgiveness, and returning good for evil. That is part of Luke 6.35. Now let's move on to the second metaphor, which is the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 14-16 Kay, Kayo ay ilaw ng sanlibutan. 
isang lungsod na nakatayo sa ibabaw ng isang burol ay hindi maitatago. Hindi nila sinisindihan ang isang ilawan at ilalagay sa ilalim ng isang takalan. Kundi sa talagang patungan at nagbibigay ng liwanag sa lahat ng nasa bahay. Verse 16, paliwanagin ninyo ang nangaya ngayon ang inyong ilaw sa harap ng mga tao upang makita nila ang inyong mabubuting gawa at luwalatian nila ang inyong ama na nasa langit. You are the light of the world. Generally, we don't like darkness. Hindi natin gusto yung madilim. Ayaw natin yung power outages. Especially if we don't have flashlight or candles or backup light. We also don't like dark alleys. Lalo na if we are going home alone. From school or from the workplace, we don't want dark alleys. We, we prefer lighted places. Yung malinaw, may, may ilaw. The presence of light in darkness is something that is unmistakable. The presence of true followers of Christ in the family, in, in the community, must be like a light in darkness. Not only in the sense that the truth of God's word brings light to a darkened heart of a sinful man, but also in a sense that our good deeds, our good words, our good works, must be evident for all people to see. Papaano po yun? How? Your deeds, works, and words, our deeds, works, and words, will be evident if we perform in accordance with the other principles mentioned in verses 1 to 12, which are the Beatitudes. Notice especially that the concern is not Christians would stand out for their own sake, but for the sake of those who look on. Sino ba yung nakatingin sa atin? Asawa mo, anak mo, tatay mo, mga anak, mga kapatid mo, mga kaibigan, and your community. They are watching, they are listening to every words. They are watching to our every actions, our responses to life circumstances. In effect, if we do it according to Matthew 5, 1 to 12, according to the Beatitudes, then they will glorify Heavenly Father who is in heaven. Then the next question may be is, what sort of things can hinder or prevent us from fulfilling our role as salt of the earth and light of the world? Ano po kaya sa palagay niyo yung mag, uh, magpipigil para i-fulfill natin yung role natin as salt of the earth and light of the world? Because clearly the passage states that there is a difference between those in the world and the true followers of Christ. So if we say I am a follower of Christ, it's not it's not measured by your attendance in the church or your being a part of a small group. But this is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So that everyone listening in the Sermon on the Mount is listening attentively that there is a clear difference between true followers of Christ and the surrounding people. Therefore, any choice, yung ating pagpasya at pagpili, yung ating pinili, if it is the right choice, it's good. If it is the wrong choice, it blurs the distinction between us and them. Pinapalabo niya yung distinction between us and them. So this can happen with a wrong choice to accept the ways of our society, the ways of the world. When we compromise for the sake of our comfort and convenience, this contravenes the law and the, our obedience, the law of obedience to Christ. That is why it's so disheartening that amidst pandemic, there are people who claim to be followers of Christ and still stealing other people's property or they are masquerading as a religious person and they are cheating other people for personal gain. In Mark chapter 9, verse 50, the Lord Jesus Christ again taught 
salt is good. But if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have a salt in yourself and have peace with one another. Yun ang sabi ni Jesus Christ. Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. This passage suggests that saltiness can be lost specifically through a lack of peace with one another. So, pagka pala meron tayong kaaway, nawala yung ating pagiging kaalatan. So, this follows the command that we need to have salt in ourselves. We need to be the preservative, the flavor enhancer, not a quarrelsome person. Hindi yung nagtatanim ng galit. Luke 14, 34-35, almost a similar similar metaphor of salt but within the context of obedient discipleship obedient following to Jesus Christ and his teaching the loss of saltiness occurs in our failure to daily take up our cross remember take up your cross daily and follow me we if we fail to daily take up our cross and follow Christ wholeheartedly then we lost our saltiness it seems then that the role of true followers of Christ as the salt and light in the world may be hindered and provided by compromising our biblical conviction. By making the wrong choice of settling for the second or settling for that which is more convenient, more comfortable, rather than to hold on to our true biblical conviction which is truly the best and pleasing to the Lord. So the status of salt and light is something that follows naturally from our humble obedience to the command of Christ. So it is when you and I depart from this Holy Spirit-led lifestyle of genuine discipleship, the distinction between ourselves and the rest of the world become blurred, nagiging malabo. And then our testimony is also hindered. Wala na tayo ngayon credibility. Only by remaining focused on Jesus Christ and His words and only being obedient to Him can we expect to be salty and become a shining light in our community. So, in closing, how does Jesus' statement of us being the salt of the earth and the light of the world apply to you and me today? God uses you and me to become a flavor enhancer, meaning to impact people around us. We help them with our biblical wisdom, with our godly wisdom. We use our ears to listen to their cry. We allow them our, our shoulders to lean on. We offer our hands to help. We offer our feet to walk an extra mile. That is becoming salt of the earth and light of the world. When we become the mouth for Jesus, the hands for Jesus, and the feet for Jesus, then we become salty and become light. Whether we are showing, we, whether we are helping slowing down the moral decay of our community, of our society, and we are enhancing the spiritual flavor of people around us. God has created us and God has called you and me to impact those people in our thoughts, in our words, manifested in our attitude, in our treatment of them, and in our behavior. So as a true followers of Christ, we are called to be different different in a way that God will be glorified in our thoughts in our words in our action in our treatment of them and this is equivalent to living the beatitudes and living righteously I hope and pray that you have been blessed by the study of the word today God bless you Heavenly Father it is my heart's desire and prayer that those who are with me studying and those who will be watching later on, may your Holy Spirit make this teaching of yours to be clear that we are called to be salt of the earth, to be God's preservative agents 
and flavor enhancer of the life of people around us. That you have called us to have this positive impact through our words, through our actions, through our treatment, in our attitude, in our behavior. So that as we do this, we are shining light for people around us. Heavenly Father, I know that in the midst of this pandemic, life is becoming so hard, especially for those who are unemployed, for people who have lost their loved ones, those who separated from their spouse, their children. Heavenly Father, heal those broken marriages. Heal those relationships are on the brink of separation. Heavenly Father, touch the hearts and enable that person to be humble. Humble enough to admit the mistake. Bestow forgiveness. Receive forgiveness. We know, Lord, that apart from this, even though we live our daily life, but if there is strife and conflict, that is present in our relationship with someone. Our life will not be blessed. We will not be truly happy. So Lord God, make our life blessed as we continue to leave the Beatitudes and becoming the salt of the earth and light of the world. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And till we meet again. Bye-bye.